Hi there, and welcome to Healthy Lifestyle Tips. Today, we're going to talk about a topic that has been gaining a lot of attention lately, gluten. You may have heard that gluten is bad for you, or you may have seen products labeled as gluten-free in your grocery store. But how bad is gluten really? Let's dive into the science and find out. First, let's start with the basics. Gluten is a protein found in wheat, barley, and rye. It helps these grains hold their shape, and it's what gives bread its chewy texture. For most people, gluten is harmless. In fact, it's an important part of a healthy diet, as it provides essential nutrients like fiber, iron, and B vitamins. However, for some people, gluten can cause serious health problems. The most well-known of these is celiac disease. Celiac disease is a serious autoimmune disorder that affects about 1% of the population. When people with celiac disease consume gluten, their immune system mistakenly recognizes gluten as a foreign invader and launches an attack against it. Unfortunately, the immune system also attacks the lining of the small intestine, which can cause inflammation and damage. The damage to the intestinal lining can cause a wide range of symptoms, including diarrhea, abdominal pain, and fatigue. These symptoms can be mild or severe, depending on the individual. Over time, the damage can also lead to malnutrition, as the body is unable to absorb nutrients from food properly. This can cause additional complications, such as anemia and osteoporosis. Celiac disease can be difficult to diagnose because the symptoms can be vague and similar to other digestive disorders. However, there are a few diagnostic tests that can be performed to confirm a diagnosis. These include blood tests that look for specific antibodies, as well as a biopsy of the small intestine. The only treatment for celiac disease is a strict gluten-free diet. This means avoiding all foods that contain gluten, including wheat, barley, and rye. Even small amounts of gluten can trigger an immune response and cause damage to the intestinal lining. In some cases, people with celiac disease may also need to avoid foods that are processed in facilities that also process gluten-containing foods, as cross-contamination can occur. It's important to note that celiac disease is not a food allergy or intolerance. It's a serious autoimmune disorder that requires lifelong management. Failure to follow a strict gluten-free diet can lead to serious long-term health consequences, including an increased risk of certain cancers. While celiac disease is the most well-known condition associated with gluten, it is not the only one. Non-celiac gluten sensitivity is a relatively new condition that has gained attention in recent years. People with this condition experience symptoms similar to those with celiac disease, such as abdominal pain, bloating, diarrhea, constipation, headaches, and fatigue. However, they do not test positive for the antibodies and intestinal damage associated with celiac disease. The exact cause of non-celiac gluten sensitivity is not yet fully understood, but researchers believe that it may be related to other components of wheat and other gluten-containing grains besides gluten. For example, some studies have suggested that certain carbohydrates found in wheat may be responsible for the symptoms of non-celiac gluten sensitivity. Others have suggested that the problem may lie in the way that gluten is processed in the body, rather than the gluten itself. Despite the lack of a clear understanding of the causes of non-celiac gluten sensitivity, there is growing recognition of its existence among the medical community. This condition affects an estimated 6-7% to of the population, which means that it is not as rare as once thought. It is also worth noting that some people who do not have celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity may still experience benefits from reducing their gluten intake. For example, some people with irritable bowel syndrome IBS, find that a low FODMAP diet, which restricts certain types of carbohydrates found in wheat and other foods, can improve their symptoms. There's also wheat allergy, which is an immune system response to wheat proteins that can cause a range of symptoms from mild itching and swelling to life-threatening anaphylaxis. Finally, there's gluten ataxia, a rare neurological disorder that affects the balance and coordination of people who are sensitive to gluten. So, if you have celiac disease, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, wheat allergy, or gluten ataxia, then gluten is definitely bad for you. But what about the rest of us? Is gluten something we should be avoiding? 
The truth is, there's no one-size-fits-all answer to this question. For most people, gluten is perfectly safe and even healthy. But some people may be sensitive to it without even realizing it. The symptoms of non-celiac gluten sensitivity can be vague and hard to pin down, and some people may experience them for years without realizing that gluten is the cause. If you're curious about whether you might be sensitive to gluten, the best thing to do is to talk to your doctor. They can help you determine whether you should be tested for celiac disease or wheat allergy, and they can advise you on whether an elimination diet might be helpful in identifying any food sensitivities. In the meantime, if you're looking for gluten-free products, be aware that not all of them are created equal. Some gluten-free products can be highly processed and lacking in nutrients, so it's important to read labels carefully and choose whole food options whenever possible. So, to sum up, gluten isn't inherently bad, but it can be harmful for some people. If you have celiac disease, non-celiac gluten sensitivity, wheat allergy, or gluten ataxia, you should avoid gluten. If you're not sure whether you're sensitive to gluten, talk to your doctor. And if you're looking for gluten-free products, choose whole food options whenever possible. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to Healthy Lifestyle Tips for more health and wellness content.